Welcome to the Sex and Humans podcast. Today we're talking with Elvis Posimistic, who invented ego evolution theory, which talks about the stages of hypermasculine and feminine and posimistic stage. Everything at posimistic.com is free and available, and he can be found on Instagram and TikTok at posimistic. I discovered Elvis on IG, and I was thoroughly impressed with his presentation and his commitment to being a positive influence in the, as the global culture changes. And with that, welcome to episode one of Sex and Humans. Elvis, what is ego evolution theory? Ego evolution theory? Let's just get right straight into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, ego evolution theory. It's a it's a new project I've been doing for the last three years, which the whole goal was trying to understand more about humans and the differences and what makes specific people different. And the whole goal with it was trying to make as much wisdom into just one single page as possible. And that's pretty much what I've been doing. And ego evolution theory is just a way to identify, read people to know where you are at in your level of development for ego evolution. And as much as I want to go into all details here, because there's, there's a whole bunch of phases, you can find everything on my site at egoevolutiontheory.com and you'll be able to find this in PNG, JPEG, and PDF in all formats. And yeah, and that is evolution theory. So why? What why 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 do this? What compelled you? What has informed you? What's instructed you to to kind of see the world from this perspective and this point of view? A big reason why over this past year why I've been so more, so passionate to talk about this and make uh, a lot of these TikToks and really was because uh, I felt there was a lack of positive masculinity in the space. Everywhere you would see online, the viral clips were of these, what people call red pill podcast bros, where mm -hmm. they would talk about, you know, misogyny, where they would, you know, the whole vibe was like, get money, fuck bitches. And do everything yeah. like that, you know, and that's that was very materialistic. That didn't really vibe with me. But in order for me to actually have a compelling argument and be able to explain to people what's wrong with that, I needed to, a visualization process to to explain to that. And that's what ego evolution theory is, saying that we need both energies, what people call the yin or yang, which is both polar opposites. My whole philosophy is saying that we need both. Learning how to integrate both of them will make you a will leave you a success to life and all that i agree well, um so how did you how did you come to this you know i, I guess uh you know for me i, I think as is as, as i pushed forward and really started to examine like human nature and our experience and what was happening and i also agree that uh, one thing that really caught my eye is you, you know literally your word of evolution i think that human beings are potentially mostly finished physically evolving but the idea of evolution from a survival point of view i think we're, we're kind of finished there if anything you know we're, we're our, our healthcare is allowing us to you know almost devolve right in a way that would be you know less specifically thriving in, in a harsh environment like for example a lot of people wear glasses and if that because that just doesn't matter anymore for survival right it, you don't have to go see the things that you're going to go eat. But I think we are evolving energetically. Uh, there is a, a real need for balance. I think that's part of what we're seeing in the world as far as gender fluidity. I think what we're seeing in the world, the experiences that say the version of masculinity that was presented and femininity to that point is no longer the only version that has validity. And I think it had validity at one point when you know there were wolves at the door you really needed the the extremes to survive in a harsh environment in a world I, I think it did have validity but at this point you know the alpha male so to speak that you were talking about the, the top g's i'm referring to yeah exactly they, they, it doesn't really resonate with a lot of people and and to be honest you know it, it's not really appropriate or applicable right uh, Tim Cook, Steve Jobs, uh, Elon Musk, these guys, these are, these guys are not red pill guys, right? Like, and yet, <laughs> yeah. 
you know, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, nobody wants Tim Cook, you know, defending their door uh, unless he's got the Apple machine behind him. But, you know, here he is leading the world in, in, a, in, a, in a certain way. Um, and so what's that really look like and how, and how do people, men in particular, because I think there is a masculine movement coming and I'm as like you, interested in saying there is a different way than just beating your chest and pretending that you're the toughest guy in the room. There is another right. way to express yourself. Um, so real quickly, take me through the, the, the top three, it can be five, right? It can be two, but you know, generally the, those, those top experiences that say like, Hey, if how, how would I, as somebody that's also listening to, you know, some of these other experiences and, you know, I've, I've, I've heard this, I've gotten this from Joe Rogan, I've gotten this from, you know, this experience and like, it doesn't really resonate with me, but what would be the questions that I would want to ask myself when taking a look at ego evolution theory? I could relate back to my story, which when I started out doing this, you know, from age from zero to 15, I was, I'd say more hyper feminine, meaning, you know, where I didn't know at the time what I had, the problems I had, but looking back now, the inputs I had were too much feminine love, which came from my mom's side, and then no masculine love, which there was no father figure, no guidance in my life. My dad was here, he was present, but he just wasn't here, he didn't have the wisdom, and he wasn't here to do so because he was at his job all day. So there was no time, you know, to do any of that. So from 15 was when I found my first masculine mentor who motivated me to improve my life, which from at the time, which he told me was at the essence was be more self-disciplined, put in the work, but you get what you put out. And from there, couple of years of grinding put me into more of a hyper masculine zone getting stuff being more materialistic and i got that you know working all these jobs starting new businesses you know all seven in high school failed but looking back they gave me lessons which by the way they're, they're like side hustles like amazon fba uh social media marketing and all that which wasn't with the right intentions which is why it failed by the way um uh, but yeah for anyone in that zone like if you notice a part of the long-term consequences so for long-term yeah. consequences of hyper feminine if you notice that you're have a little uh, hints of entitlement a little bit of neediness emotional volatility judgmentalness of sort of a victim mentality that's a good sign that you may be leaning towards hyper feminine and the solutions would be to implement more humility the art of surrendering empathy but also for masculine, which is missing, was implement the four, which I like to reference right here, which is having a purpose, producing value, implementing self-discipline, and using your sexual energy for the better to cultivate into something bigger than yourself. And those are the core four I have right there. I think that's great. I, I think well, one of the things is that requires knowing yourself and, and some sort of self-reflection, which... I would argue is um, not a generally hyper masculine trait. <laughs> uh, right. Is that self reflection, right? And that 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 empathy. I think that's an important word. I think words have meaning and words have value. And um, I, I do shy away from the idea that you know we can redefine words to be whatever we want them to be. So, right. how would you define empathy? At its core, is pretty much just a. Uh feeling what the other person is feeling, which sounds like a superpower, but not really, you know, if it's a skill that you learn over time, which can be learned from being in person, from, from feeling, from judging, from learning the signs of, you know, people's emotions. And really empathy is close to what I like to refer to most, which is compassion, which that's like, not just feeling, but having an, another desire to actually do something about it. You know, if they're feeling awful, Doing, having the desire to make them feel better or if they're suffering mm -hmm. you know let's make them be successful let's make them heal and 
empathy is needed. It's a high value long term skill set to develop, which is not really something you can implement today after listening to this. But uh, yeah, it's something to look forward to. Empathy, compassion, self care, you know, perspective, and certainty, and for forgiveness. But compassion, charity, by the way, which is a, a new note, by the way. Uh, in in the Bible, they talk about you know charity replaces greed, but I've been discovering that charity is just the vehicle for compassion at scale. You know, one of the things that I think is important is is teaching people, or at least providing a way to get people to ask the right questions to themselves, because I think the answers to everybody is, is quite specific, right? Your version of the masculine feminine balance for you in your life, the way that your body interacts with your mind is going to be different than mine. And both can be very, very successful and very, very self-promoting. To that end, I would actually argue that there, there are hyper-masculine men where the, the masculinity very much aligns with the male. And that really is who they are and that's how they are. And we, we, we want those guys, right? Uh, I went to the U.S. Naval Academy. I was a lieutenant in the Navy many, many years ago. Nice. The men that are Navy SEALs, for example, you, you want them to be on the more hyper-masculine side that is advantageous to their life and to their job. That Navy SEAL is not going to end up, you know, a, a wet nurse, right? Uh, right. You know, the kind, right? And, and that's okay. Right, knowing yourself is important, um, and 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 understanding how you behave and how you want to interact with the world in a way that is positive for you. For me, growing up, your job wasn't to know yourself; it wasn't to really find out how you interacted with the world. It was to manipulate yourself to interact with the world as a hypermasculine alpha success leader driven and that is what masculinity that's what a man was and if you were anything other than this very narrow viewpoint you were beta and that meant weak and that wasn't good and right. um and i think there there is a, a huge pushback to that i don't want to present the idea necessarily that that is a bad way, right? It's not necessarily bad, in my opinion, to be hyper-masculine. It's only incorrect if it's not for you. And I would argue that it is for a lot less people than those that are aspiring to it. So uh, I wanna be able to give people an opportunity to say, who am I? What do I want? Are the things that I'm doing in my life today have any realistic way of getting what I say I want in the future. And I think your roadmap really allows people to, to check in and potentially even at a daily level of saying, hey, today in some self-reflection, which again, a, a bit more of an evolved state, look at, look at, let's have a little self-reflection about the day and say, well, what worked and what didn't, right? Uh, let's check this, you know, today I had a conflict with so-and-so and, uh, this is how it went. I wish it had gone differently, but this is how it went. Let's see what happened in my world and what happened in my, myself and that compelled me to respond and, and what was the outcome. And I think you could use your chart to say like, okay, like I got super angry and I felt justified in my anger, but you know, it wasn't very helpful and it, it certainly didn't improve the problem. So how can right. I, the next time something like that happens, can I make a different choice? And uh, a big theme of this, this podcast is an intentional culture. And I think being intentional about those things, rather than just trying to win at any cost. Do you specifically think masculinity is aligned with men and femininity with women? Every single one of us, every piece of consciousness, which for not just humans, but also animals, the, the trees, every piece of consciousness, you know, is has polar opposites in this uh, material world, because in the material world, it's full of dualities. There's hot, there's cold. If there's happy, there's sad, there's night, there's day. And 
Same with us. There is what people call masculine or feminine, which personally, I have nothing wrong with it. People have, you know, some deep rooted insecurities when it, people hear those, you know, terms, but feel free to use any label you like. Let's just use yin and yang for this session, this podcast session. Sure. So, yeah, so I think that uh, men, you know, they have more of a masculine because of their biology. They are more naturally masculine. And then, you know, women, obviously more feminine. And it's to their advantage that we have every single one of these strengths. And it's not a bad thing. It's just learning how to use these to better your level of existence for your life. And what I think, or what I'm saying with this whole chart for ego evolution theory is that when you learn to master both, that's when you reach fulfillment or what the old Bible Testament said, heaven on earth, which mm -hmm. by the way, when I first heard that when I was a kid, I was like, what the heck even is that? You know, <laughs> what the heck, you know, the people teaching all that felt like they didn't even know and, you know, no fault to them because there was no resources. There weren't, probably wasn't a lot of opportunities to know or to teach better ways. But I think heaven on earth is fulfillment, inner peace and success, which is success, which when you learn how to right. use the feminine and the love, the, the masculine love, both intertwined, yin yang, that's how you live a wise life. It, the answer is both. That's so how you, you think answer. that's the goal is living a wise life. Um, yeah, I think the goal of uh, American society in the last 50 years has been living a rich life. And that's specifically relating to money and resources. Um, and then those that achieved, you know, even some of the pinnacles of that, you know, found their life wasn't very fulfilled. And, you know, this notion that, that emptiness money can't buy you happiness, and then there's emptiness. And, and then there's a pushback that says, like, yes, I, I want no money. And, and I don't necessarily think that's the answer either. We're just going about it with the wrong priorities. And I, I like your definition of success. Um, and maybe that definition of success is doing something that you, you does have a, a significant you know, fiscal reward. And I don't think that's something to shy away from. But it also might be not super wealthy. And if you are fulfilled and content and happy, you know, our social judgment of your experience in the world shouldn't be diminished and yet at the same time you know isn't driving a ferrari and being you know this quote unquote red pill you know alpha and alpha guru yes yeah right i mean it's it's also ridiculous it's also to be honest that's how i see it it's it's all just marketing they're playing to an audience they're creating a scapegoat it's very it's very it's very base actually. And, um, and, and I really like this, this next generation Gen Z coming in a leaning towards this experience, a leaning towards, I don't want to make the same mistakes as my previous generations, but I just don't want to do the opposite of what they did either. So let's see what we can, let's try and get a roadmap and things like your, uh, your work, I think are, are really important for that, right? So right. as we kind of reimagine masculinity, I think it's important that men follow their dreams and kind of allow that to redefine what that sense is. What is your story and your version of success for yourself? And how have you used, you know, your, your thoughts and your work to, to implement that? My journey so far with, you know, ego evolution theory and, and myself as a case study, which Pretty much already started with uh, being from age zero to 15. I started out hyper feminine, you know, got no, I had yes, mom, but no dad. And then from 15 to, to 18 or to 20, that's when I got more hyper masculine. And that's when I learned from my, the guy who taught me, by the way, which is one of these, ironically, one of these uh, online, uh, make money online gurus, which was Ty Lopez. Quick story, he went, he went viral for like a, making a viral ad on YouTube in 2015, being the here in my garage guy. I just bought this new Lamborghini. But you know what I like more than this Lamborghini? Knowledge. That was this whole thing. And that's what got me hooked. You know, that's what sparked the desire for bettering my life. You know, I saw my life that I didn't want to be where I was at. And so 
I listened to his advice for, you know, those years, which made me more, a little bit more hyper-masculine, but not too much, which I didn't get the wounded masculine shadows, which the spiritual people talk about. So I did get uh, more income. I did get the better body, you know, the health, the wealth, the love. But then at age 20, which I, for some reason, I found the missing feminine love, which from this guy uh, on Twitter, which completely un, unheard of. And so uh, I'll paint the picture. So I was, you know, in my masculine, I was, I was doing all this online marketing, but then this guy resonated with me and his name was a uh, Tej Dosa on Twitter, which I know he's watching this right now. Shout out Tej. He's, he's a mentor. He's, he's also my client right, right now, by the way, which is pretty cool. And what he taught me was like the healthy feminine, but he didn't call it feminine at the time. And I'm grateful he didn't because he probably would have, you know, repelled the hypermasculine Elvis brain back then. But he labeled it saying like, hey, you want to be ultra successful? Forgiveness, you know, surrender to the ego. Uh, all these feminine principles like compassion. And that's what I did. His emails were addicting from 20 to now, which I'm 23, by the way. I'm learning how to do more uh, both. My quick recap story, you know, hyper feminine, masculine, and then sort of in the middle right now. I would, I would argue most of us lie in the middle. Where we are on that scale, you know, I think is a fluid. And as I said, I don't think there's a right or wrong to what it can be. I think there's just correct for you or not. And it's, I, I like how we, you asked to, to refer to masculinity and femininity as yin and yang. By the way, which one goes to which for you? Uh, which one for, for when, me? Yeah, so when we talk about masculinity, would you like to call that yin and femininity oh, okay. yang? Yep, let's do it. Because I agree with you. I think it's a, it's a failure in vocabulary to where when I talk about masculinity and I say that word, it immediately inspires male. And I think that that is potentially incorrect. So um, you know, for the rest of this, what we'll call, when, I, when I'm referring to the, the thought process and the energetic experience that is traditionally masculinity, what we'll call it yin and, uh, and femininity yang, and maybe their hope to, uh, to avoid the, the instant relationship to the gender that it is experiencing it. Because I think human beings Bingo. will have will have both, right? And sure, th there's a, a leaning one way or the other, but I think it's very possible to be a hyper-masculine female and be very successful in your life and in your, your, your relationships, in your career, you know, and, and find fulfillment without having to deny that natural instinct just to align with a social conformity that says women are yang. Right. The societal norms. Yep. The societal norms. And I think those are being questioned a lot and I think it's really healthy, but I also think that, um, when in history, when we have started to question society, the adherence to the norm can get weaponized. And I think that's what you're seeing with, to your point, you know, some of your, uh, the red pill experiences is, is really a weaponization of social conformity. And it can be very, very successful in that, you know, it, it can really convince a lot of people because the very act of questioning the experience creates conflict and, and the dominant social structure can come at those questioning and saying, if they would just stop questioning, all the conflict would go away. These guys are causing problems. So let's move away from them and then the conflict will stop. And isn't that our goal? Isn't that our goal is to be not, you know, is to not have conflict? And it's, it's a very, it's very malicious twist of intention and purpose. But I think you are, I think we are seeing it. And to present a different model and a different future for human beings and how to live is, is, is pretty important. You've mentioned the Bible a couple of times. Do you have a, a specific um, religious affiliation or, uh, you know, it, how did that how did the uh, the knowledge of the Bible inform your your life and your experience, and and, and what part of that plays a role in in ego evolution? Yeah, the Bible. When I was young, I was completely repelled by it. Like 
I'm guessing majority of people in the West who don't really like church. They think they thought church was boring like I did. You know, I didn't see the value in it. Like, you know, first childhood to teen years, completely against it. But then what happened was I started learning about books, about self-help books, talking about the material success. But then over time, I don't know how, uh, probably watching a lot of YouTube videos or the people in the books saying, you know, referring back to Bible verses and referring back to this one book as the main source of knowledge, which then motivated me to actually read the Bible, listen to it. And then from there, I, I got hooked on it. I, I realized that the Bible was the OG self-help book. It's, it's the main thing. It's been here for like 2000 years. It's proven. It, it works out. And yeah, it's, I think it's absolutely wise. It's based which, uh, by the way, uh, do you know what based it means? I'm curious. Um, what does it mean to you? Gotcha. So base means uh, just, just another word for wise. Like, oh, that's based. You're based and red-pilled. You know, that, that's the common saying, but I think base is just another word for wise. Uh, mm -hmm. Mine is the red pill part. I, I just say based. It's just the cooler Gen Z way of saying, you know, someone's wise. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty much what I think. Uh, the Bible is based. I think everyone should read it. But if you think it's boring, like I did, there are some other alternatives. Sorry, there's some other alternatives, like uh, uh, people who have remade the Bob, the Bible in like picture forms. There's there's TV shows like The Chosen, which is one of my favorites. Uh, you can also read Ego Evolution Theory, which is pretty much just the actionable steps the Bible talks about, but just like in one page, easy, simple to read form. So if I don't subscribe to Christianity in, in, in any way, does EU evolution theory work for me? I believe so. Yeah, I mean, for anyone listening, you know, give it a shot. I also try to make evolution theory not anything religious because the people who need, I guess, the religious content are the people who are oppressed by it or repressed by it. Or are, like, mm -hmm. it, it pushes them away when they hear about God, spirituality. And it's a shame because these are the people who would benefit the most from. They would have the giant growth curve. And that's why I specifically intentionally avoided putting Bible verses or anything on the actual theory. I made it more practical, more logical that, you know, you could see in your everyday life. And when you, when you, when you live your life, uh, I think a big part of following your masculine dreams is uh, creating, is being a role model for for others and you know one of the things that i've learned in my life is that if you want to really learn how to do something teach someone else how to do it yep. learn the steps that are required that can communicate your intention and your purpose versus um you know because some people just have a natural affinity for things and they're just good at it Right. But if they're just good at it, um, it's very difficult sometimes to identify the steps that you're just naturally good at and you, you skip over and you don't realize necessarily that someone else can get stuck on them. So I think role modeling for others is really important to help us have empathy for the challenges that other human beings, men and women, are experiencing when they try and go through this this untested experience that is you know a a more blended version of energies to achieve a new definition of success so i mean obviously you are creating this for the world you've given it to the world for free which is important but specifically in action in relationships right where have you found that to be most helpful as you kind of role model for others um, in your, your human relationships with one-on-one -on -one, like IRL? Yeah, so for relationships and how I would pretty much uh, use the yin and yang uh, ego evolution theory is it's also a good way to read people and to know which level of uh, evolution people are at. And so knowing this, you can help out your people uh, that your partner, what, what I meant to say, to level up if they want to, and then knowing how to do so, which 
there are two ways I've noticed to help someone grow. And, you know, your people, not only your partner, but your friendships, uh, your team members, you know, there's two ways to grow. And if it all depends on if they do see you as an authority or if they don't see you as an authority. And the way if they do see you as an authority, I recommend people do the masculine approaches, which talk about, uh, you know, educating. Uh, I have like the seven E's, which I have it right here. Yeah. Which for no one listening, you can follow along. It's the black ego evolution theory model, which it talks about the five E's of the masculine approach include embody, educate, engage, ego enhance, environment, make it exciting, and establish. And that is what in- to do the masculine approach because they already see as an authority. There's no force. There's no trying to uh, convince people. Convincing is sort of low value. You know, instead, we want to be compelling. We want to be able to, you know, have enough value so people would just want to listen to effortlessly. But if they don't see you as an authority, which is most common, like, you know, most commonly people who don't see you as an authority are, you know, your siblings, your friends, people on the street, strangers. And for that, I recommend doing the feminine approach, which is, you know, uh, being acceptance for doing that right here. So it includes acceptance, being emotionally supportive being patient and being compassionate and being okay with not, you know, forcing down your, your positive beliefs on them and being okay with whatever outcome happens. If they do grow or they don't grow to know what outcome you want is a huge thing. And for the outcomes, you know, majority of people want you know, success. They don't want the opposite, which is suffering and violence and emptiness. And what I have listed is, you know, there are successful fears and there are unhealthy Hyper again and hyper again fears. Yeah. So what I have listed is, you know, well, so when people say, you know, the only thing you should fear is God, you know, you know, the people who are spiritual, but you know, that's not really practical. Like, well, what does that mean? You know, I found a way, you know, to actually make it more practical. And I've listed right here, fear, repelling the pure and attracting the wicked fear, not learning something new fear, not finding the right opportunity fear, playing it safe or unconscious conformity fear, not taking the risk. And fear and living in delusion. So that was pretty much the six I have listed so far. You know, it's probably going to change in the future. But having these fears will help get you closer to the outcome of fulfillment, inner peace, and success. Because if, by the way, if we do the opposite, which I have listed here, which is having the fear of appearing weak or feminine, having the fear of looking dumb, the fear of being taken advantage of, being exiled from the tribe, fear of failure, social embarrassment, Fear of ugly truth, all those six I just said will most commonly lead you to a life of suffering and, and violence or emptiness. To your point, if they already view you as an authority, it's it's this is going to be an effective path. And if not, there might be another effective path. Uh, and, and it's not just everybody falling in line and, and falling into a very, very specific understanding. And it's, hey, are you a follower or a leader? One of the things that I learned in leadership at Annapolis was the first lesson in being a great leader is learning to follow. I think another way to say that the, you know, the, the power of the yin lies in knowing and understanding the yang. You know, both need to exist at the same time, and you have to have empathy for those following you if you are going to lead. Otherwise. I think they just end up following because they're afraid of not following. You've talked about a lot online. Uh, Do you think most of your education has been through this online experience? Yeah. So I'd say, you know, in how I education for my previous, for my life, I think the world is changing and I don't believe in the whole school system anymore because it, it has been outdated. And, you know, that's how in my life, what changed was learning from people online. And that's what I currently do. You know, I, I don't have any in-person mentors who I see as an authority. The internet helped expand the world, which has been a major blessing, which connects us to the, the actual best people in the world. You know, previously, before the internet, you were just limited to your community, the people who your people in your classroom and in your community. And that's what was beforehand. But now the internet has achieved, achieved that. And so, in the future, how I think of 
education and for people learning is through most, mostly expansion through online. And with these new TikTok algorithms, we can get fed, you know, these rabbit holes and these new people who talk about similar things who are actually do what they do and they preach what they do and actually have skin in the game. So for, yeah, for schools, you know, I've noticed this too, we were to schools, like people don't value teachers anymore. And it's because mm-hmm. kids are smart these days, Gen Z, like they know that they're not the main person in, in line. Like they know the teacher isn't the main person to call the shot. They can, the teacher can get fired. They know that the, it's the people higher up in the chain. They, they, don't, they know the chain and, and the whole command. They've seen it all. It's more transparent. And so people are just uh, going away from that facade and the online space helps that, you know, people, the, the influencers or the leaders of today have proof. They can say, they share their stories and online and there is no force. There's, there's no force of, you know, do this or you get smacked on a wrist. It's, you know, Hey, I have something of value. Do you want to listen to it? If not, scroll to the next one. <laughs> that's really it. And that's an amazing feature. And it's only going to get better from there. Do not lose your optimism, kids. That's all I got to say. What what can we look forward to if this voice, your voice, what I'm trying to implement? Right. So our voices, not just my voice for anyone listening. You know, it's the people like you and us and listening, you know. It's not just one person singular down like it used to be. It's most people, you know, it's a spiral dynamic stage green type of content, which is a little more advanced. But yeah, so I think the future is going to be a more amazing. I think that if you want to make positivity, healthy yin and healthy yang, you know, louder and more more uh, popular, it's going to start with influencers and actually getting on the platforms where the most attention is. Like I've noticed people who are who I listen to, you know, who are healthy, who are in the middle stage, they avoid things like TikTok. They they avoid, you know, creating an account, making content on TikTok because, you know, the stigma of saying, oh no, it's it's destroying the people's attention spans. I'm not getting on there. It's just going to ruin everyone's life. But I have a counter argument against that, you know. It's the, and actually, it's the lack of good role models that leave an abundance of the terrible ones. What would you communicate to those that are listening yeah. So any last, the last words of advice, the wisdom I, I give off for anyone listening to is, uh, you know, I guess the main, main cliche people ask is, you know, what's the meaning of life? And so I'll just give my interpretation of that. And I think, you know, it changes often, but what's been working for me is loving what's in front of you consistently, because the thing in front of you is the real thing. It's the actual thing. It's not in fantasy land. It's not anything else, you know, all that. Loving in front of you, you know, it's easy to know what's in front of you. Just look what's in front of you and then choosing to love that, even if it's hard to love, you know, like what if it's a person who's abusive or like a, a angry dog, you know, well, am I still going to love that person? You know, um, I think, you know, it's, it's there's certain levels of that, but, you know, be safe. Of course, you know, don't be dumb. <laughs> Please don't, don't get yourself hurt. But like at a distance. Maybe, you know, understand why they're that way, especially the hardest thing there are to love, like an abusive parent, you know, noticing why, you know, why are they like that? You know, oh, it's probably because of their stress from overworked rails or they've experienced some trauma, you know, experiencing that and slowly give love at, at that. And, you know, what practical ways to give love, you know, all those are listed on ego evolution theory on the martial model itself, which will go more in detail. But yeah, that's my main thing advice is to love what's in front of you consistently. But yeah, I, I, this has been a fantastic conversation, Elvis. Uh, you know, thank you so much for being on here and presenting your work, which I think is, is, is really quite excellent. And I hope that uh, more people kind of find it and are able to use it to create some balance in their life and to create, you know, some forward momentum, potentially in a direction that doesn't have a lot of guidance right now. Uh, last thing to wrap up, if uh, you want to come follow me, want to learn more about my work, uh, all my socials are at Posimistic or Elvis Posimistic, depending on the platforms. But yeah, I have a Twitter, uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and website is egoevolutiontheory.com for all the models and uh, all the formats and everything else. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. You know, we're going to get more viral. We're going to get a positivity louder and yeah it's going to be amazing well i'm glad i'm glad to be on that ride with you elvis awesome thank you so much john
let's let's get to it. Thank you for listening to the Sex and Humans podcast. My name is John David Whalen, powered by Riverside FM, edited with Autopod.